So here we are in an end scale empire, just on the other side of the basement. Fantastic. Great panels, lots of rolling stock, and it's not something you see too often as a, a railroad in end scale that's operated. But you have one. Yep, I do. Tell us about and that. This is the uh, St. Francis Valley. Yes. And uh, the St. Francis Valley is a river. Yeah. And uh, that's in uh, eastern Quebec, mm -hmm. in the eastern townships. And this is representative of a part of the eastern townships itself. Now the layout was not built by, my, by me. It was mm -hmm. built by a very dear friend of mine who uh, died and uh, left it to me. Wow. And as luck would have it, I had room that was exactly the same size as the area it came out of. Mm. And um, so we moved it and we continue running in the tradition that had been established by, uh, by him, Ken Healy, yes. back in 1981, I think mm -hmm. was the very first operating session of this railway. He, he built it starting in 78, finished around 81. And when I say finished, it was basically this part. Yeah. So just this. So is, is this is, looks like a uh, dog bone uh, kind of design, right? Yes. It just basically has the outer loop with uh, lots of switching in between, and good mainline running. You can do a lot in end scale. So originally, this was operated by three of us: the the owner, myself, and another friend. Right. And then <clears throat> an extension was made here on the left in a place called Sorel. Right. And then an extension was made on the right to uh, Sherbrooke. And what that did was it filled out the area that was originally uh, being planned for mm -hmm. in the eastern townships, which took you from the St. Lawrence right. down to, basically down to the U.S. border. Mm -hmm. The idea was that the St. Francis Valley, which actually did exist as a railway, um, but didn't last uh, as long as uh, you, would, you would want, mm -hmm. but the idea is that the St. Francis Valley was actually more... more um, uh, economical, more successful than originally it turned out to be, and that it managed to survive, and instead of being absorbed by Canadian National, it carried on as its own short line. Mm. And there are a couple of CN freights that come through from Montreal, through the St. Francis Valley lines, down to Sherbrooke, and then on its way down to uh, Portland, Maine. When you were designing the, uh, the operating system for this, and it's been operating for quite a while, you must have uh, started with some sort of schematic and build an idea of how you wanted to run the well, trains? that was how it was done. Yeah. Um, just have the, the idea about where everything uh, was leading to, mm -hmm. and then develop the trains with that longer-term yeah. uh, vision in, uh, in well, mind. So it's, it's, it's essentially it's end-to-end -end running. Right. Um, now, there is a very small return loop here, so you could run something in or just have something running to show sure. someone something running around. But basically it's end to end running. So you set up a series of trains that were plausible, that had some reason for being, that would go mm -hmm. from point to point with uh, drop-offs right. and pick-ups along yep. the way. Um, how did you actualize that? Uh, you, you had a plan and, and then what came next? Well, the idea was, I guess, like they do in the real railways, yeah. they make out a path. schedule of times yeah. and the, the path so that um, throughout the day there's always something going on. Right. And the various colours indicate which operator is doing something. So the mm. idea was to try and balance out the amount of work that was done. And Just who to was recap doing. this then, you've got the different colours representing basically the different operators. And you have a numbers on there, which I guess are the, the, train, numbers. the train numbers. And right. then you have time along one dimension, yep. and you have the point-to-point -point stations on the other on the other one. That's right. Yeah. And the actual physical uh, timetable there with the actual times running, sure. running through. Now, do and you use a clock? Or? We use a clock, and yeah. to give it a bit more plausibility, it runs at 10 to 1. Oh, 10 to 1. So, right. Okay. So yeah. that when we start an operation about quarter to eight, yeah. um, we'll finish about 10 o'clock and we will have done 24 hours. Excellent. So that, that's yeah. the whole idea. Now well, the, other, the other thing is that um, the whole operation is driven by this, by this schedule. So it's the same schedule every time the operators come. Sure. But the orders, the traffic orders, are unique 
to right. each individual operation. All of the cars and the knowledge of the trains and way bills and so forth is on my computer. Mm -hmm. And every time before an operating session, I run this program, which uh, then identifies what's going on, what train. Mm -hmm. and so if you were to look, if you want to look down here, you'll see a, um, an instruction here. Yeah. And so this, very, this first one is actually alerting this operator that train 394, when yep. it arrives here, is going to drop off the items at the bottom, mm -hmm. pick up the ones at the top. So okay. he's going to get the top ones ready, and then he's going to be prepared to do something with the ones below. And it has a number, so going to 73 and 15, those are right. all track numbers, I would take no, it. No, they're not actually right. track numbers. The okay. first digit is the, is the uh, town. Okay. And then within that, it's the industry or track number. Uh, all right, so right. 73 would be town 7. Right, so that's which, behind us, that's yeah. in uh, Lavinia. And number 3 would be a particular industry. Right, yes. And looking at this schedule, there's actually two cars that are going to go to that Go to location. 73, right. Okay. And, uh, and that's more a, just get this ready. Right. Whereas this one mm -hmm. is a prepare this train. Okay, so, so you're, you're actually... The operator here would then go on to make up this train. Yeah. and um, So that would be, be trains coming from the classification tracks that you have here. Right. They would build the train. Now, curiously, this one goes out just as a caboose in a locomotive. <laughs> and it comes back um, with... It goes to location 7. 73. It does a bit yeah. of switching there and then brings back with it to 80 because Drummondville, which is where we are now, yes. is uh, station 80. Mm -hmm. And there are different ones have sort of, here's the local switching to be done within Drummondville. And uh, the, the pickups, everything starts with an eight because we're in Drummondville. Right, the eight would be the, the town location right. of Drummondville. And, and zero would be the yard? Zero is the yard, okay. that's right. Oh, well. <clears throat> Well, that all makes perfect sense. <laughs> hey, and I see that you have the these wonderful, wonderful turnout toggles. Eh? Is that what those yes. are? Those are all terrific. The, um, I mean, the, 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 all of the track is hand laid. Yeah. It's code 55. And all of the turnouts are hand operated. Right. So if you look at this one down here, turnout number 18, mm -hmm. can you see it upright? Over yeah. There? Yeah. Okay. And well, that's all handled, I guess, with some sort of piano wire it mechanism? Is. It's uh, it's uh, piano wire through a tube, mm -hmm. and then it has a, th a device underneath called a Lazy 7 switch that has a sort of center point, so it gives it a bit more of a solid connect on both sides okay. of the uh, uh, of And the what truck. would Lazy 7 switches typically be used for in reality? Are they just something that oh, you no. can buy? Uh, no. You make them. You make that a lazy was, seven. <laughs> the, the whole the whole thing yeah. was um, uh, based on an article that was in Model Railroad many years ago. Right. And it was called the lazy seven switch. Okay. And so that was used for all of the mm -hmm. switches in uh, here. There's a hundred and odd switches, and every one of them uses a, a lazy mm -hmm. seven for uh, uh, for doing that. Some of the switches also have a mimic over on the. Um, on yep. this panel, panel. Okay. switch that on so you can, so you can see all right. because <clears throat> we have six people running the trains mm -hmm. but we also have um, we also have a dispatcher right. and his job is basically keep things running because uh, sometimes you do get late, freight trains do go early um, we also have an irritant train that we can run through if things are Sort of mm -hmm. getting a little bit sloppy. Um, so the train numbers are the little magnet pieces underneath? Right. Yes, they and, correspond to... And they snap onto those here. little blocks depending on where they're yep. located. Right. So. Just if it was... T so he, he can keep track of where things, where things are. Right. And the mimic lights don't do every turnout, but they do the main turnouts on the main line. Okay. So that he knows that... Um, what direction they're throwing. thing has been set up mm. correctly. And... There are also mimic lights for when somebody gives main power right. because it's up to the dispatcher to decide who gets the power. This is the, 
throttle. The throttle gets the power yeah. in this section mm -hmm. of the layout. But he has to have the cooperation of the operator of the places it's going to run through yes. because he's going to give mainline power. Ah. And when he does, the, oper the uh, dispatcher will see an orange light come up to show. So it's good that they're in chatting distance. Yeah. Yeah, now this right. major toggle, I see it says main and, uh, what is it, local? Yep, main and loop. And loop, okay. This is, if you look over to the left, there's a diamond. Yes. And so there's a switch just before it. Yeah. And so the main and loop is, if it's on main, it means it's set to go so through that on you the can main. go across. If it's on loop, That'll it, bring it around prevents this loop. so that when you're switching, yeah. you're not going to foul the, uh, the, main. Uh, the main loop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's terrific. So, <coughs> just to get an idea of point to point, let's start at one end of the layout, maybe down here, and we can right. just go through what where well, we're, where we're going tonight. Perhaps we'll start just before here, okay. because the one I've made two changes since moving it here. Yes. <clears throat> the first change was I took six inches off the legs. Yeah. And that was for two reasons. One, it made it more you were at a better height for seeing when you were when you were operating. Yeah. I'll, uh, this. The other reason was to give some room for expansion. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you look above, above here, there's going to be trackage above. Right. And essentially, the second what, level. Uh, what is that second level is going to contain is uh, storage yards that represent the places that trains would have come from and mm -hmm. gone to that came through the St. Francis Valley. Okay, so there is... So, the first one is actually in operation. It's oh, around okay. the corner here. And, <clears throat> and this is Montreal CN. Yeah. And so... So it's staging. It's staging. Yeah. Um, but there's no switching done here. You no. Know, uh, because the, the, uh, the program takes care of all of that. Mm -hmm. But it's essentially so that when something comes to the end of the line in the St. Francis Valley, but in reality it wouldn't have done, where would it have gone to? Well, if it was going west, it would have gone to Montreal. Right. And so this is Montreal CN. So trains can come in off the layout, they can actually loop around and be prepared they loop to come around out. Into again. one of these yards yeah. and then they're ready to come back. To go back. And they come back as a different train number. They and, they, um, yes, they'll come back yeah. as a different train number. Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay. So, <clears throat> starting on the CN part, then the uh, trains would have started in Montreal, right? And they would have made it into Sorel, and Sorel is on the shores of the Saint Lawrence, right? And um, so there's a yard. There's also the maintenance facility here, and trains would have continued from Sorel out onto the main, eh? Through the main into Drummondville, right? Again, and, and so we, we have an operator at Sorel, we mm -hmm. have an operator here. They're fairly busy locations. Yes. Um, then that continues out of Drummondville right. from the middle line, this guy here, okay. through to Lavenir. Which is the lower level here? That's the lower level. Okay. And so you've got a passing siding and a facing and trailing. Uh, industry. Right. So just a little bit of um, interesting switching right. going on here. And then disappears into the tunnel mm -hmm. and circles around underneath right. coming out on the lower level down here here in Ulverton. Now there's an operator in Ulverton mm -hmm. but he's a bit of a journeyman. He also operates the little switching yard you just saw there and yeah. later on around the corner as well. Sort of almost like a branch. Then. So, uh, well, no, this is the main. It but, is the main. But he, the operator here, is a man of many talents. He has to do here, he has to uh, do there, and he has to do there. So he has to be mobile. Moving, moving him around and be mobile, right? <laughs> yeah. So his so, mainline track continues on. Mainline track. And then it loops up around the back. Yeah. Hiding the, behind the buildings. Hiding behind the buildings comes out on the upper track. Ah. And. But the other track is actually a, sp a branch off here. Okay. And that used to go to, it was a secondary air entry into a place called North Troy. 
mm -hmm. come to that in a moment. It's still going to do that, but it's going to do that by going up a helix to the upper level. Oh, okay. So continuing along the main line, you would go into Richmond, which also has an operator because this is quite a busy, uh, busy location. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's a lot of power uh, moves here. Yeah, that's right. A fair number of trains begin and end out of uh, out of Richmond. Yeah. And it continues, the main line continues into the tunnel. Okay, so up. the uh, main line now we see it going by past the main station right, here. Right, through the station. Underneath the bridge. That's right. And heads through the tunnel. Through the tunnel. And then it we'll comes out on the lower and runs along the wall and then behind and uh, around here. Coming into Windsor. Ah. Uh. And Windsor's claim to fame is the paper mill. Mm hmm. So then we get the uh, paper mill, and uh, we're leaving Windsor. Right. And then that comes into into Sherbrooke. To Sherbrooke, Quebec. Right. Down near the American border. Right. Now, in fact, when the layout was first built, this is two locations. Right. Remember the turnoff I mentioned back. Yes. A little bit further back. Yeah, that, that, was the, that was the Orford Junction line. Yeah. And it used to make its way into here as well. Mm -hmm. So this is, re in reality, today, it's two locations. It's Sherbrooke and it's North Troy. Okay. And one of the changes that will happen is that North Troy will move out of here, will have its own location right Up top. here. Yeah. And to get to North Troy will involve this helix. Okay. I can probably put a bit of light in on that if you. Oh, that's good. It'll that, show. That's okay. Yeah. All right. You can see, it's pretty, uh, pretty robust camera for mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, so it's about about a two percent grade. It's going two percent. Yeah. It's a two percent grade, yeah. and it's it's double tracked because there are actually two different helixes. One is for. Uh, the uh, the North Troy, and then mm -hmm. the other one is when trains got to Sherbrooke. That was not the end of the line. Right. They continued on to Portland, and mm -hmm. so the train will will eventually continue out here along this track, join the, the second track on the on the helix, and, go and make its way up to the to the top. Yep. And we will have um, North Troy here. Yep. Well, North Troy wasn't a terminus either. No, of course it not. It went on to Boston one way because mm -hmm. it was a junction and it went on to Montreal the other way. So it'll go out to Montreal and behind you will be Montreal CP.